It is my privilege and honor to introduce to you one of my favorite young people. When I think of Nellie, I think of miracles, inspiration, motivation, a young lady and a family that has broke new ground for many years. I've known Nellie my whole life. I've watched her and her successes. I've watched her stumble a little bit. And when I was asked to do this, I considered it a real big honor. Mostly because I've got a lot of pictures on my iPhone, but they couldn't figure out how to connect it to the big screen this morning. So I was hoping to get to that, but maybe later. Um, they said we had 30 seconds or maybe 60 seconds. I kind of considered that a challenge because she's had so much accomplishments in such a short period of time. Um, in 17 years, she's accomplished quite a bit, both professional and personal. Nellie's enthusiasm and energy has served well this past year. It's been fun following on her accomplishments and the newspapers and emails that come across my desk. Nellie's fierce, she's competitive, she's compassionate, she's caring, and she leads with the Lord in her heart. For those of you that know her, you've already, you've already experienced this. For those of you, of you who haven't, I challenge you to meet her because she has a lot of gifts to give. I'm a better person for knowing Ed and Debbie and Nona Lee Bell, uh, Nellie's parents, uh, their influence on me has been tremendous. Uh, their light shines. Uh, wherever they go, uh, they are uh, people of the light, and uh, Nellie has followed in their footsteps. I remember when Nellie was born, I've seen her grown up working hard, picking lots of strawberries, <laughs> being the first Indiana State FFA officer from a homeschool background. I know Nellie will continue to serve, and I'm enthused to see the special plans and special future God has for this great young lady. Please help me welcome your Indiana FFA Southern Region Vice President and my niece, Nellie Bell. supposed to do. Gas prices are through the roof. Our country's at war. The economy's struggling. People are out of work right as I'm starting out in life. Basically, there's no hope. Or is there? Whether we are prepared for it or not, our future is going to become reality. But what matters is how we see it. It is our choice. We've all faced moments of gloom, and we've all been kind of scared about what the future might hold. But we don't have to be. We're all going to face challenges. We're all going to face those moments of gloom and struggle. But what's exciting is we can see a glare. In those moments of gloom, our character is tested and who we really are, deep down in our core, will shine through. When my grandpa was a little boy, he grew up and was working on a farm to help support his family. It was the 1930s, the height of the Great Depression, and the only way that his family could manage to get by at the time. But like any normal kid, he had high hopes and dreams for his future. Until one day, when he was just my age, his life was interrupted by a radio broadcast. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news bulletin. The Japanese have attacked Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, by air. President Roosevelt has just announced. President Roosevelt described the day as a date which will live in infamy. The day was December 7, 1941, the attack on Pearl Harbor. Now what? So much for those high hopes. Our country was suddenly at war and life rapidly changed for him. But within a short period of time, young men and women all over our country responded to that call, even my grandpa. In their youth, this generation answered the call to free the world. And then they took on the challenge and the plow to feed the world. 
My grandpa has been described as a member of the greatest generation. It is because of this generation that I can boldly say that the weapons of those enemies now are only able to be viewed in museums. He had high hopes and dreams for his future. And while the war interrupted them, and while he faced some gloom, those barriers challenged his character. And in the end, his life shined. This generation kept our country free. That left a legacy. The agricultural industry and technology skyrocketed like never before after the war. That also left a legacy. Every single one of us is going to face that moment of gloom, that moment that we're not expecting, that we just don't want to face. But the idea behind it is that we can see a glare. Do we let problems in life and struggles and challenges keep us from moving forward? Do we just want to give up? It's like the lyrics of one of my favorite songs. You can hide beneath the covers, or you can run outside, head held high, and carry on. We can see a glare as we look towards our future. Look at us now. Our generation is facing some challenges too. Aside from hoping that our cell phone battery doesn't die while we're texting, or hoping that we can quickly find a Wi-Fi connection so we can check our newsfeed on Facebook, update our Twitter status, and hope that our iPhone has enough charge that we can find the nearest Starbucks so we can get our double shot espresso white chocolate latte before we crash in the afternoon. There are some more serious challenges that we're facing too. Populations are increasing. There's talk of food shortages. Our country's still, it's still at war. The economy, we're in a major recession. What do I want to do with my life? Where do I want to go to college? I just don't know. But it's how we react to these things that will define our character and who we are. Achievements won by the present and past generations of agriculturalists in the promise of better days through better ways, even as the better things we now enjoy have come to us from the struggles of former years. As FFA members, we've probably heard that little phrase a time or two. But E.M. Tiffany knew when he wrote the FFA Creed that the things that we have right now haven't come easy. There have been challenges. There have been struggles. And it hasn't always been fun. But he had hope for the future. He saw a glare. Problems, we're going to face them. It's part of life. It is inevitable. But how are we going to react to them? Do we face questions and just want to give up? Think about it. Look at your life. Do you see some gloom? Because even though there might be some gloom on the horizon, there is a big, shining glare behind it. Problems in life are partly what we make them. We may not always have a choice about what we face in life, but we do have a choice about what we do as our reaction. And that will be our character. We can shine in those moments for what we truly stand for. What are we shining for? For me personally, it is my hope that I can shine for my creator and reflect a glare for his love and his promise for the future. And when I'm seeing some big, scary clouds of gloom on the horizon, and I just don't want to move forward, some words that drive me on are this. Be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. That's what helps me personally. But like I said, problems are going to happen. It's part of life. I believe that American agriculture can and will hold true to the best traditions of our national life, and that we can exert an influence in our homes and in our communities, which will stand solid for our part in that inspiring task. The future 
of our generation and the legacy that we leave lies in our hands. What are we going to do with it? We make the choice to see the gloom or to see the glare. So look at your future. What do you see? Do you see the gloom or do you see the glare behind it? There is hope. There are opportunities and there is a glare. For me, I choose the glare. Who's with me? strawberry shortcake and you're our southern belle. You've impacted others with your wonderful kindness. You are our adopted sister and you're the 2010-2011 Indiana FFA State Southern Region Vice President. You have impacted and you choose the glare. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2010-2011 State Southern Region Vice President, Nellie Bell.